The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Sam Spade Detective Agency. Hello, sweetheart. It's only me. Oh, Sam. Why so modest? Women, Effie. Age cannot weather nor custom stale their infinite variety. Huh? Against their incalculable wiles, mere man is a leaf in the wind. Oh, Sam, do you really... Oh. Who was she and how windy was it? Cyclonic, Effie. We had to close every window in the house. But I... If you will just contain your natural feminine curiosity for a few moments, I'll be right down to dictate my report on the bow window caper. Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. To every man who says, I don't use a hair tonic, or I don't believe in a hair tonic, I say this. Decide for yourself, but don't decide until you've tried Wild Root Cream Oil, the entirely different hair tonic. There's not a drop of alcohol in Wild Root Cream Oil, and it contains soothing lanolin. What's more, it grooms your hair the right way, neatly and naturally. So get the big economy-sized bottle and the handy new tube at your drug or toilet goods counter. Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in The Adventures of Sam Spade. A bow window is a bay window that you look into instead of out of. Look into instead of out? Oh. Oh, Sam. <laughs> Get your book, Panther Girl, and slink on in. Well, what was she trying to see through the, the, the bow window? Hmm? I mean, whose house was it? Her own. But if it was her own house, then why would she... Uh, it just at... goes to show you, darling, what some women will stoop to. It does? Mm-hmm. There was a low window. Oh. Well, whenever you're ready, Sam. Uh, date, November 10th. Ninth. Ninth. Uh, correct. 1947. To Dr. Helmut Ries. I was right for once. Yeah. Oh. From Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Subject, the bow window caper. Dear Dr. Ries, I know that this report will not make pleasant reading for you, but you paid for it, so here it is. As far as I was concerned, it all started on Thursday morning when you called at my office. From your story, I gathered it had been going on for some time. You, you will say these are merely the actions of a jealous woman, Mr. Spade. But I assure you there's more to it than that. It is, it it, it must be a carefully thought out plan to ruin my career, my, my whole life. In uh, what way, Dr. Rees? She spies on my private consultations. Insults my women patients. I can no longer even keep a nurse for more than a week at a time. Scenes, hysterics, she... Outbursts of violence. I cannot continue my work under such conditions. Well, why don't you give her a divorce? Why, no, no, no. This is not her desire. If it were, it would be, it would be simple. No, she wants to bring me to ruin. She wants to see me on my knees in front of the popular. Why? That is what I want to find out. Why? Doctor, I think you ought to take this case to a head doctor. I have consulted a psychiatrist. The examiner. She's perfectly competent mentally. So you see, there is here already some mystery. For which one comes to a detective. Uh, how long has this been going on, Dr. Reed? Since three months only. But in this time, she has reduced me to utter desolation. Dr. Reed was a very good divorce lawyer right down the hall from my no, office. No, no, no. I discussed the matter of a divorce with her a few days back. This was her answer. Uh, you see... A receipt for the purchase of a gun. 
And this note in her handwriting. I hope you will not force me to use this. Esther. Yes. Well, what do you think she has in mind? Murder or suicide? She refused to discuss it. But one thing I have noticed. Since she has bought this gun, a new development, a strange man watches my house. Several times I have caught him following me. Well, she might have hired a detective to check on whether you visit a lawyer. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps it is very simple, but it is all too strange to be harmless. I uh, half-heartedly agreed that it might be, Dr. Reese, and when your check for 100 bucks didn't bounce, I went to work wholeheartedly. I reached your house on Pacific Avenue just as the street lights were going on. It's a quiet neighborhood, so I could hear it before I got close enough to read the number on the door. Get out! Get out of this house! Get out! You have no... They seemed to be slugging their way toward the back of the house, so I decided to risk an entrance. I found the doorbell, and I was about to punch it when I caught sight of your mystery man. He was crouched in a clump of shrubbery that grew under the bow window at the corner of the house. He was still there with his eyes glued to the window when I walked up behind him. Hey, let go of me. Let go. Come on, come on. You're going inside. Listen, I'm not just a snooper. I'm I only... didn't say you were. I'm just inviting you inside for a better look. Now, I'm warning you. If you don't let go of me, I'm... Stop squirming, will you? Let go! The kick he landed on me wasn't according to the Wrestling Association's rules, but I let him get away with it mainly because I couldn't move for three or four minutes, and by that time he disappeared down the street. When I recovered my faculties and staggered back to the door, I didn't bother ringing the bell. I just walked in. The hen fight was still going on somewhere in the upper reaches of the house. Then a door burst open on the upper landing, and a girl in a nurse's uniform ran down the stairs toward me... Pursued by a pale little woman with a pinched face who was brandishing a pair of brass fire songs. You brushed past me, Dr. Reese, and headed off the pursuer. Esther, stop it! Stop it at once! Have you gone crazy? Give me those fire songs. Give them to me! What's the matter, Helmut? Afraid I'll mar your light of love's beauty? What started this? I caught her creeping about the kitchen. kitchen. She was going to poison my food. Explain to you, Mrs. Reese. The doctor said. Oh, don't, don't, don't bother explaining, Miss Roberts. These morbid fancies of hers. Don't think I don't know what goes on in that office. That office where I'm not allowed anymore. That's only because you make the patient so nervous, Esther. I know what goes on. You and those women. That will do, Esther. Go to your room. Very well. But I won't have that woman in this house another day, Helmuth. Is that understood? Go to your room, Esther. I'm going, I'm going. But remember what I said. I warned you both. I can't. There, there, Miss Swabbins. Now don't. There. I can't. Then anymore, Doctor. I tell you, it's making me a nervous <clears throat> wreck. I just... Uh, Dr. Reese. Huh? Oh, Mr. Spade. You saw, you heard? Yeah. Uh, uh, come into my office. We'll talk. I think we'd better. Uh, doctor, there's still one more patient waiting to see you, Doctor. Well, just uh, have her wait a little longer. Uh, uh, this, this way, Mr. Spade. Much longer, well, the doctor way. will see you just as soon as he possibly can. Have you been feeling any better, Mr. Uh, sit down, Mr. Spade. Thanks, but I can say what I have to say standing. Your wife's a very tragic woman, Doctor. Yeah. I wish I could help her. I wish I could help you, too, but I can't. You heard her threat against Miss Robbins. Was that a joke? There's nothing funny about jealousy. Uh, but there is this man who watches the house. The gun she bought. I collared him outside just now. Oh, well, did you get him to talk? No, but I wouldn't worry about him if I were you. And about that gun. The Constitution says every citizen shall have the right to bear arms. Even Parnell Thomas can't do uh, Mr. Spade, I've not yet told you all. If I... Oh, Doctor, I'm, I'm sorry yes. to interrupt, but this patient, she's been waiting for more than an hour. Well, who, who is she? Mrs. Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh? Cavanaugh, who... Well, has she been here before? Of course, last week. Here, here's her card. Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd better get it over. Uh, send her in. Yes, Doctor. And, and Doctor, I'm resigning. I'll finish the day, of course, and, and then I'm through. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, well. Very well, Miss Robbins. I, I, I can't say that I blame you. Good luck. Goodbye, Doctor. Well, I'll be going along myself now, Doctor. Uh, no, 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 no. You must hear me out, Mr. Spade. I have not yet told all. If now, if you just wait until I have seen this patient, uh, please, Mr. Spade, please. Okay, I'll wait outside. 
Oh, I beg your pardon. I beg yes. your... Uh, come on in, Mrs. So, uh, you're leaving the doctor's employ, uh, nurse? I am, I am. Well, Mr. Spade, how does it look from the grandstand? Messy? Mm-hmm. You don't mind if I finish cleaning out this desk? Go right ahead. Thank you. What's the matter with Esther, anyway? Oh, I could sum the whole thing up in a single five-letter word, shall I? You have. Are you going to walk out on him? Aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. Oh, but Esther isn't jealous of your type. If you don't mind my mentioning it. I feel heartened to think that you noticed I was different. Oh, I did, Mr. Spade. I really did. You don't seem uh, particularly nursey to me, either. I'm not. My, you have a fast pulse, Mr. Spade. Uh, yes, I've uh, been feeling very weak the last few minutes. I uh, need care. Oh, you know, you don't eat enough apples, Mr. Spade. Well, I guess I finished. Oh, there's that old contact. I wonder. Mr. Spade, will you tell the doctor I've left and thank him for me again? Aren't you going to see him before you go? No, no, I'm not. It only begged me to stay, and it's... Well, it's simply out of the question. Oh, the poor guy. I just don't know what I'd do if I were in his place. For you, Mr. Spade. <laughs> I did, and I told her. She told me I was a victim of hypertension and left me with my mouth open and no thermometer in it. Five minutes after she'd gone out through the front entrance, your wife came down the stairs looking knowingly at me and the door to the doctor's office and left by the same route. Ten minutes after that, I was halfway through a 1937 National Geographic that was the latest edition on the waiting room table, and it reached the third paragraph on the natural beauties of Winona County, Minnesota. But I never finished it. I will be back in a minute. The first thing I saw when I entered the room was Mrs. Cavanaugh, your patient patient. Why? Why did she do it? You, doctor, were standing over her, nervously twitching off the rubber glove from your right hand. You tested her throat for pulse, then listened through a stethoscope. It was purely a formality. One of the 38 caliber slugs had entered the right temple. The other had torn through the base of the skull. How did it happen? I, I don't know. I had completed the examination and walked over there to put my instruments away. When I turned, when I turned back, she had a gun in her hand. Before I could stop her, she pulled the trigger. Suicide, of course. Why? Well, I just told her the truth, that there was nothing I or any other doctor could do for her. That she had perhaps a month, perhaps less. She had suffered great pain, of course, for some time. Uh -huh. You saw her shoot herself, you say? Yes, yes. The gun, she took it out of my desk drawer. I'd removed it from my wife's room earlier today. I see. Well, doctor, this is the neatest suicide I ever saw. No powder burns, and from the way she's lying, she must have shot herself in the direction of that window, at least ten feet away. She screamed before the shots were fired and had time to fire a second bullet into her head and throw the gun across the room before she fell. Well, Helma, at last it's happened, hasn't it? Esther, leave this room. I told Helmuth one of the husbands would catch up with him. Pretty, wasn't she? I don't remember this one. The expression on your face might have been horror or fear or both, Dr. Reese. But your wife was smiling. When my eyes left her face, I noticed a leaf clinging to the hem of her coat. It might have come from the shrub that grew up against the house. And her shoes were splashed with mud that could have and probably did come from the cultivated flower bed just outside the bow window. The makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. Now, here's important news on good grooming. Better than four out of five users of Wild Root Cream Oil say they prefer Wild Root Cream Oil to all other hair tonics. Here is new and even more conclusive evidence that Wild Root Cream Oil is again and again the choice of men who put good grooming first. 
So if you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who bought Wild Root Cream Oil for the first time were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? The results were amazing. Better than four out of five who replied said they preferred Wild Root Cream Oil. And no wonder. It gives you the advantages that men consider most important. Wild Root Cream Oil grooms your hair neatly and naturally, relieves annoying dryness, and removes loose dandruff. What's more, non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil is the only leading hair tonic that contains soothing lanolin. That's like the oil of your skin. So ask for Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. And now, back to the bow window caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. Obviously, there were two equally good suspects in the Kavanaugh murder. Either your wife had killed her in a jealous rage, or you'd killed her with your wife's gun to frame her for the murder. I decided to let the police worry it out and went home to bed. The morning headlines were a bit of a surprise. Nurse sought in shooting a mystery woman. Item. The cops had found Celeste Robbins' fingerprints all over the murder gun. And item. Mrs. Cavanaugh, the murdered woman, had given a vacant lot as her address, and her body was lying unclaimed at the morgue. I decided to pay her a visit. Maxie, hey, Maxie. What? Oh, Sam. Sammy, my boy. Hey, it's good to look on you. How are you, Maxwell? Oh, fine, fine. What brings you here, Sam? The Kavanaugh woman. The Kavanaugh? Oh, Kavanaugh, huh? Well, let's see who's with us today. Uh, Stiftel, Milton, Schwartz, Kelly. I knew him, nice guy. Feige. Aha, Kavanaugh. Rose. Hello, Rose. Hey, Sam, don't you want to look at Rose? No, I've seen her. Ah. Yeah, just checked her back in. Autopsy. Say, you do collect queer ones, Sam. Mm. Now, you take her. Why would anybody in the world knock her off? In her condition, all he needed to do was wait. A month, a couple of weeks. Bad as that, huh? Worse. Anybody claim her yet? Well, they... Hello. Something we can do for you? My name is Kavanaugh. I've come for my wife. He was standing with his back to me, and I didn't get a good look at his face until he walked over to the desk with Master. The voice tipped me even before I saw the face. It was the man I'd caught outside your office window less than half an hour before the murder. If he recognized me, he didn't let it show. I waited while he went in with Maxie. When he came out, there were tears streaming down his face. I'd been waiting for two reasons. I had had some questions to ask him, and I had wanted to pay back that jolt he'd given me the night before. I left without doing either. Oh, sweetheart, any calls? Lieutenant Dundee of Homicide, yeah. uh, Dr. Reese, mm-hmm. and there's a girl waiting inside. Wouldn't give any names. So you let her wait in my private office. Well, I don't think you'll mind when you've seen her. She's by way of being a knockout. Well, uh, thank you, Effie. That was uh, very thoughtful of you, Dan. You're welcome, Sam. Sam, please, please don't be angry with me for coming here. I, I had to talk to somebody. What you need is a good criminal lawyer, Nurse Rodden. Oh, no. Oh, no, do you think I killed that woman? How did your prince get on that gun? And don't tell me she threatened you with it and you grabbed it out of her hand. No, no, I didn't. I did nothing oh, at all. Take it easy, nurse. Take it easy. Would you like a drink or something? No, no, of course. Thank you anyway. I'll, I'll be all right. Well, she came in from shopping three days ago. Just as nice as pie. And she came creeping around. You know how she is. And she said, I bought something today. It's lovely. And with that, she hauled this gun out of her handbag. And so, to humor her... I took it and I looked at it. That was foolish. It certainly was foolish. Well, nickel plated. I deal surface for fingerprints. And I remember she was wearing gloves. Struck me as peculiar at the time, but I'm I'm so stupid. I didn't think of it until just now. Everything's a little peculiar about this caper. A woman who was dying anyway gets shot. Nobody even seems to know who she was. Doesn't make sense. No. No, it doesn't make much sense. What should I do, Sam? Give myself up? I think you should. Yes, I thought you'd say that. All right, 
Phone the police. You got a lot of courage. Sure you don't want to drink? No. No, thank you. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Uh, homicide. Dundee. Uh, Dundee. Sam Spade. I got the Robbins girl here in my office. She wants to check in. Oh? Uh, well, tell her to forget it, Sam. Reese's wife just made a full confession. That tore it. In my anxiety to see how you were bearing up under the shock, Doctor, I blew a buck and a half of your money on a taxi all the way out to your address on Pacific Avenue. To my astonishment, you were wearing a look of real distress. I I don't understand it, Mr. Spade. This confessing, it's it's not like her. It's all too strange to be harmless. Dr. Reed, I'd like to talk to you alone. Do you mind, Mr. Spade? Go right ahead. <laughs> Strained my ears outside your consulting room, but all I could hear was a few vague murmurs. Then, for no good reason, I decided to have a look at your wife's bedroom upstairs. The cops had been there before me, so I didn't expect to find much, and I didn't. I was tapping the woodwork for secret panels or something when I heard a heavy tread on the on the stairway. I wheeled around, my hands inside my coat. A jolly-looking character in coveralls was standing in the doorway. Home electronics. I beg your pardon. Jagan. Home electronics. <laughs> I come to take the equipment. What equipment? At a dictograph. She don't need it no more. <laughs> Ask me, she hurt too much. Mrs. Reese had a dictograph installed? Yeah, her metal type installation. Yeah, this here's a speaker. <laughs> yeah, my own design. Looks like a portable radio, don't it? Now, yeah, where's the other end? Where's the uh, microphone? It's in the doc's private office. Uh, you interested, eh? Yeah, turn it on, will you? Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll get it tuned in a minute there. Uh... Oh, feedback. Wait a minute, I'll fix it. Can she tell? I don't know. But it's uncanny the way she knows. Nice, huh? Every word we spoke together. <laughs> That's because of the dictograph. Hey, Rick, huh? Eh? Shut up. This is my agent. We cannot allow this terrible tragedy to come between us. We love each other. Nothing can change that. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's as nice, no, ain't it? Quiet, quiet. I, I just know, please, please, don't. Now, now stop it, Helen. I don't want you to. Please, don't. What is it, Celeste? What has happened, Jane? What has happened? You ask that. When I've been attacked by a mad woman and accused of murder all in the space of 12 hours. But it's all over now. Just so, Helen. Yes, it's all over. Well, don't you turn it up a little more? Oh, sure, sure. Turn it up. I hold it, hold it. It's over. It's over. And I'm very, very ashamed. I suppose it was my usual thing. I always get sorry for a poor, weak man and get involved. But this time, I'm sorry for her. Celeste, please. When I was a kid, I liked it. It used to make me feel powerful and, well, to watch them squirm. But it's no fun anymore watching another woman in the agonies of jealousy. And you, I thought you were just weak. You're a brutal, unscrupulous murderer. What are you saying, Celeste? You killed Mrs. Cavanaugh. Why, that's, that's impossible. You stood deliberately in that window and you fired two shots right at Hey, what gives you? Why weren't my fingerprints on that gun? Because. You were wearing your rubber gloves, Doctor. Celeste, don't say any more. No, no, no! <laughs> Let me get his shirt off, Mr. Spade. He's been shot. Who shot him, you? <laughs> Through the window, the same man, the one who watched the house. Hold, hold this tourniquet tight, please. Uh, it's nothing. A flesh wound. His aim was bad. Yeah, too bad. Cavanaugh, you still out there? You got nothing to worry about. He's still alive. I missed him. Give me a hand. Come on. That's it. I missed him. Well, that was lucky. You're taking the rap for your wife's murder, too, if you're a better shot. He did it. He killed my wife. I was at the window. I saw him. What I don't understand is why his wife confessed. She loves him, Mr. Cavanaugh. You should understand that. I guess that's what happens to love when it gets crossed up. Why didn't you tell the police what you saw? They'd have hung it on me. She she was a stranger to everyone else. I'd been quarreling with her, suspicious, acting like a maniac. She never told me. She must have been going to one doctor after another, trying to find one that would give her one ray of hope. In pain all the time, too, and never letting on. Never. Even after that first visit she made to Reese's office, I didn't tumble. I, I thought she was meeting him on the sly. And I followed her both times. That last time I carried a gun. 
I might have killed her if what I suspected had been true. Uh, I'm very sorry, Mr. Cavanaugh. I, I didn't realize. You're pretty late with your regrets, Doctor. I don't quite figure you either. Maybe the prison psychiatrist can. Dundee homicide. Uh, Dundee, tear up Mrs. Reese's confession. Come on over and get the doctor. Dr. Reese? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, he accidentally shot himself in the arm. Isn't that right, Doctor? Uh, what? Oh, yes, yes. Accident. Why didn't she tell me? Why didn't she tell me? I don't know, Kavanaugh. Women. Sometimes they make too much sense, or we don't make enough, or maybe we're all crazy. <laughs> And that, Dr. Reese, is the crop. The risk of laboring a point, there's also the mystery of why a nice girl like Celeste Robbins ever fell for a guy like you. You'll have plenty of free time to think it over between now and the trial. If you find the answer, drop me a line. Period, and a report. You know, Sam, that, that Celeste, I like her. I wish we could do something for her. Well, I've already thought of that, Abby. Oh? What are you going to do, Sam? Write that up, sweetheart, and I'll write you a happy ending. Here's how you can find out whether the hair tonic you're using today is giving you what you ought to get in good grooming. Ask yourself, does my present hair tonic groom my hair neatly and naturally, or does it leave my hair sticky or greasy? And does it relieve dryness and remove loose dandruff too, or does it do just a halfway job? Unless you can honestly say that your present hair tonic does all that for your hair, you owe it to yourself to try Wild Root Cream Oil right away. Try Wild Root Cream Oil and see for yourself how it improves your appearance. Grooms your hair neatly and naturally, relieves dryness, and removes loose dandruff. It's non-alcoholic and contains soothing lanolin. Get the big economy size bottle and the handy new tube that's easy to pack when you travel and grand for the bathroom cabinet. Don't delay. Get it today. Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Oh, here's the report, Sam. You want to read it over? I do not. File it under F. But forget. About that poor Celeste, Sam. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I made a date with Celeste to take her dancing tomorrow night. She uh, needs cheering up, you know. Well, what for? Well, you said she needed help. Well, that isn't exactly the kind of help I had in mind. Oh. I don't see why it's necessary Effie, to take Effie, we must each of us give what particular kind of help each of us is particularly equipped to give. Very well. She wished to... She used to make over men just to get the other women jealous. That she did. Aren't other women silly to allow themselves to get jealous when they know just what she's up to? Idiotic. Just idiotic. Sure thing. And go home, Effie. I'm a lousy dancer. Oh, very well. Have fun, Sam. <laughs> Good night, Sam. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> The Adventures of Sam Spade, Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Duff. Lorene Tuttle is Effie. The Adventures of Sam Spade are written for radio by Bob Tallman and Gil Dowd, with musical direction by Lud Gluskin. This is Dick Joy, reminding you that next Sunday, author Dashiell Hammett and producer William Spear join forces for another adventure with Sam Spade, brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again... The choice of men who put good grooming first. Smart girls use Wild Root Cream Oil, too, for quick good grooming and to relieve dryness between permanents. Mothers say it's grand for training children's hair. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.